LSD at sunrise, my friends. LSD means Little San Domingo. Um, we're right at sunrise here. Soon. You got the moon up yonder. Pretty and very quiet. Just saw an owl. Beautiful area back in here. We're gonna we're gonna hunt right down. Probably right down in here today. That's a nice out. Uh oh, animal bones. Yeah, piece of a cow. An unlucky cow, it appears. Beautiful and quiet. Won't be long before Big Red gets up in the sky and uh, that'll change all that. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking we better get with it before we cook. Let's go get a nugget. Oftentimes folks wonder what makes me pick a spot. And uh, part of what I promised to do is show you why I would work a particular spot. Um, this one has a lot of garbage and stuff around. We're on top of a uh, material called volcanic tuft, which is basically volcanic ash that was solidified by the earth, heat pressure. Um, but got nice hard pinkish purple consistency depending on where you are. But laying on top of this oftentimes you're going to find placer materials. And the placer material we look out here look for out here is metamorphic rock on top of this stuff. And of course I look for tailing spiles. And evidence the old timers are here. So looking around a little bit here, we see pieces of tin cans. We see garbage. These guys weren't clean. More cans. Big old sardine can there. And as we start coming down the hill, you see the gray material here and the chunks of it. But what you're also going to see is a tailings pile. All right, this is dry wash for tailings. Here's the bigger rocks that they tossed out. Right there's a tailings pile along this little wash. They're working these little bitty washers in here for nuggets. Another tailings pile. Bunch of barking dogs in the background back there at one of the ranch houses. Tobacco can. Well, maybe not. Yeah, I guess it's square. Big tailings pile right there. So this must have been pretty close to camp because you can see the cans. They'd probably bring the dirt up here later in the afternoon or something and run it. But you can see they're really messy. There's cans and crap everywhere here. What's interesting about the cans, a lot of times you can tell the actual era the guys were here and by the cans. And what I mean by that is if you oh, look at this can, let me see here. No, maybe not. Okay, off to, this is an old milk can. See they poked a hole in the bottom and a couple in the top and drank it. Now, this is probably from the 40s and 50s. And earlier cans will have a solder dot right here. Right there in the middle. And it was in, by 1921, somebody figured out that lead was poison. So they quit making solder dot cans. 
So if you find a spot out here in the desert, if you find a spot with the solder dot cans, you're in a really old area, um, back before World War, <coughs> World War II. And if you find an area with the later cans, it's generally um, pre-depression, or, or I mean depression era and after the war. Um, I'm not real good on history on this stuff or, or who was here or when, but I can tell by the cans if they're from the 60s or the 70s or um, earlier, which is helpful. We're going to walk down here and look around a little more. We're still mainly seeing the gray material here, but things are starting to change. If you notice right there, we're starting to see some metamorphic material, which are those black rocks with the stripes in it that kind of look... It's kind of like an iron stone, iron stony looking black material. Right. And you walk down here, we got more garbage. More garbage. Tailings everywhere now. This whole little flat area was worked by the old timers. Right. And I've been coming in here every now and then and working these uh, these tailings piles and finding small nuggets. Yeah, see, these are these are 40s, 50s cans probably after the war. People out here trying to eke out a living. More tailings, tailings. This whole little area here was turned over and worked. Uh-oh, we got more bones. More bones from that unhappy cow, I'm sure. All right, we're gonna walk right over here. You see more tailings. Tailings, it's just the whole area has been worked. Most of these little hilly spots are old tailings piles. But what you're gonna notice in these tailings piles is the key, okay? We got metamorphic materials in there. We got quartz in there. We got greenstone. If you look, you got some greenstone going on here. The color's not good right now because the sun's not up, but the sun's not fun this time of year. Okay, you see the material? Out here at LSD, we even looking for areas without tailings piles. If you find this sort of material, and reddish dirt, oftentimes, you're in a good area. You see all these tailings piles, they scraped off the top layer with all this metamorphic material in it. And that's what they ran through their dry washers. Right down to the top layer of this, and they're cleaning out all the little washers. You can see they worked even harder in here. Okay, when I'm hunting new areas, I'm looking for evidence of this kind of work. You can remember what I said about my friend Jim Strait and his book, Follow the Dry Washers, and I actively follow the dry washers. These guys were on to good gold here, enough that they worked a lot of material. And if you notice, most of the fine tailings piles are pretty much leveled out or they're not as, as pronounced as the header piles. Okay, The header piles are the ones with the bigger rocks in them. The reason for this is these are pretty old, and the uh, most of the stuff, finer stuff, is washed down flat and just left the header, header piles. Okay, it's going to get hot soon, so uh, let's turn on the detector and see if we can't snag us a nugget or two. Beautiful morning. This morning we're going to be using the uh, Gold Monster 1000 from Mine Lab, one of my new favorite detectors. I really like this thing. Um, I've got the 5-inch coil on it because when I'm hunting small gold in a beat-up area like this, I generally put on the small coil because I'm looking for little scraps and small nuggets that were missed because um, I've hunted here before. So I've cherry-picked this pretty good over the last 20-some years. I can still manage to squeak out a piece if I work real hard. We've got this thing set up in manual this time at about 9 clicks. And we're hunting in deep, 
we got a full battery and I got the volume up pretty high so that you folks can uh, hear it. I'm not wearing headphones, I usually do. And I'm not in auto in this spot because the ground allows me not to be with a high, one of the higher settings in manual. Now if I go to auto on this thing where I hunt much of the time out here because the ground's so hot, it's two more clicks up, first time that center of that blacks out. I love this machine for its ease of use, okay, ground balance. Move it around, boom, she quiets right down. This is where people get in trouble with this machine. I know I repeat this time and time again, but now this machine's running quiet as can be. Okay. Um, that's a target, probably a big piece of trash, but I'll probably dig it up here in a minute anyway, but you can see it's all going left. A little bit to the right, back and forth. I dig those. Um, anyway, uh, back to the detector. This morning, I'm gonna take a couple clicks back. This is actually what I consider to be the hottest setting on the machine, but it's, it has trouble holding a good steady balance. You get a lot of extra ground, extra ground noise from the machine. So I'm going to click it one more back from there. Okay, this is where I was just now. Now I'm here. This is where I'm going to hunt today, if the ground allows it. Um, a lot of the ground out here is just too darn hot, and we have. I end up hunting in Auto 1, which is a really good setting. It's real sensitive. But I think there's a little more depth if you can hunt in the higher um, manual settings. I'm just, it seems that way to me. I'm going to go ahead and hunt. I'll talk to you all in a minute. All right, I got a target here. It's probably going to be trash by the reading, but I dig most targets, or all targets, I should say. I don't dig the hot rocks, but I dig my targets. We're going to see what we got here. Still on the ground. Huh. There it is. Down a little ways. Still down. Interesting. Animal hole down there, see it? Thank it. It's out. Right there. There, we got it in the coil. Now we have a nightmare out here. It's quail hunters. And these guys come out here and willy-nilly shoot these little bitty BBs all over the place, man. I mean, I don't know if that's what I got here, but it's starting to sound like it. And they are so small. And this machine picks them up, no problem. And that's what we have. Now, I don't even know if you're going to be able to see this, but I dig many of these. See it rolling around in the spoon right there? Yeah, BBs. They're such a good target. All right, let's go. Man, I got to tell you, the sounds of the desert coming alive. Um, the sun. Watch your eyes coming up over the hill there. The birds, the animals, the coyotes are howling. What a beautiful morning. That boy, Big Red's just starting to come up, so she's going to get cooking here soon. I better quit sightseeing and uh, just get back at it, I think. I got one here that sounds pretty good. I just dug three pieces of trash here, though, so hard to say. Could be another BB. You just never know out here. Thought I was right on the surface there. Down a little bit, anyway. 
Okay, we got it in the scoop. Let's see what we got. Boy, sure not seeing much. Still in here. I felt something hit my hand and I see it. Okay, you see right there? It's a re, a little bitty. I think it did. Yeah, a little bitty nugget right there. See it shining in the sun? Okay, I just dug three pieces of trash right here. Three. little nugget is a nice loud signal on this thing you saw me dig it up from almost two inches deep okay um let's see if I can get it on my finger kind of funny you got to pick nuggets up with the finger but you can see it shine in there a little bit of caliche stuck to it cute little piece yeah cute little piece that's about my 12th target today let's go we got another target here right next to where I dug the other one it's a real screamer but the uh, detector seems to think it's something non-ferrous so I turned the camera on shouldn't be anything that big here that... but people walk away from trash Sometimes this machine will give you a false iron or non-iron reading on the graph on top. Depending on how deep it is, it could be a deep piece of crap that the machine wasn't sure about, so it goes both ways. This one, this one's all to the right, which usually indicates something non ferrous but it'll do that on something round, too, for some reason, I have learned. But I'd rather dig it than not know. Still all to the right. But it's awful loud. In deep. Okay, it's out of the hole. Out of the hole. And in the scoop. Well, cross your fingers. I could use a nice one. No, nope. there it is. But the machine was correct. Non ferrous bullet. Looks like a 45 slug. Yeah, anyway, oh well. Gotta dig them all. Gotta dig them all. All right, we got another signal here the machine thinks is a good one. Right on top, it sounds like. And it was. It's in the scoop. It's in the scoop. Now, this is a real trashy area. That's why a lot of people don't hunt it. I'm patient enough to dig the trash to get the nuggets. I already see what this one is going to be a little BB. And a little one. A little bitty BB. Right there. Another one of those cursed BBs. See it rolling around in there? Yeah, that's, uh, we dig a lot of those. Yeah, you know, some of them down three inches or better. I love this little gold monster, but man, oh man, is it sensitive. But I'd rather hear the little pieces of gold that size than walk past them. So I'm more than willing to dig. 
Alrighty, a target here. See that? Hot rock. Yep, didn't see that. Part of what we deal with. Yeah, right, we got a little target right here. All to the right. I'll show you in a minute what I mean all to the right and all to the left. I'm probably confusing some people. This machine has a little bar graph up at the top and it will tell you if the machine thinks you're on a ferris or non-ferris target. And uh, I don't use it to dig or not dig generally, but it's real good at identifying hot rocks. And uh, other crap. This one sounds pretty darn shit. I don't want to pick up too much dirt because if you do, you can cover up your target in the dirt and it take all day to find it. Still down in there a little bit. Okay, it appears I got it in the scoop. Yep. Kadoki, here we go. That darn ring, I better take it off for a bit. Bad enough this thing will actually hear your hand. Okay, here we go. In my hand. Still in my hand. Bingo. Yep, I seen gold. Wait a minute. I saw gold. There it is, right there. Little gold nugget. Right there. Yep. You can see it in the scoop. I don't know if I got a good view for you there. It's a gold nugget right there. Little one. You can get it out of there. Little nugget right there. Yep. Right there. <laughs> Yeah, it isn't always trash, is it? That's two for the day. Man, I'm getting over cabin fever fast. My friends, I am literally right next to the last hole I dug. Right next to it. There's the hole. Listen. Okay, what I mean by the ferris non ferris you see this area right here on the top of the detector. Now watch as I go over this target. It's all to the right there. That's the machine telling me it thinks that's a non-ferrous target. Every now and then it jumps to the left. That could be ground mineralization. This person might have been a little sloppy with their dry washer. Generally the BBs will bounce left and right too because a lot of these BBs these days are uh, alloyed because they don't like all the lead being shot into the desert. So I'm going to shut the camera off and put it on down here and we're going to dig this up. Cross your fingers. Okay, here we go. I mean literally right next to the hole. First scoop. Yeah, sometimes that's not such a good sign. I don't know if I can get this sideways. I guess it really doesn't matter. It's in there, you can hear it barely. Pop, pop. In my hand. Still in my hand. Back into the... Doing the scoop. 
still in the scoop. Holy moly. <laughs> yes, sirree, right next to the other hole. I was even dumping my dirt in the other hole. Look at there. This is a real tiny, real tiny one. Yeah, see it shining in the dirt there? You see that? That's cool. All right, we're going to try to pinch him out of there. Make sure I didn't miss it. Okay. What you're hearing... Now that detector's quite a ways away from the camera. I'm sure you can hear that target. A little bitty gold nugget. Right there. Let's go get some more. Well, I'm getting a little long-winded in this video. We're probably going to have to do it in two parts. Um, turned out to be a longer morning hunt since I'm getting gold. And uh, I don't want to stretch this out too long and put you to sleep. So this is the end of part one. And uh, next video I put up will be the second, second part of this hunt. I can shoot her out.